Hello, 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 hello. I'm so glad to see you. Some of you might be wondering why I'm doing a video this early. I'm not due for another couple of days, but something was nagging at me. So I did my master vault video where I talked about all the vaults and their experiments and everything like that. And it took me a couple of takes. We had the dogs were asleep. You know, usually when I shoot these things, sometimes they snore, sometimes they wake up and bark. Um, I think I ordered food at some point during that video. Uh, and I was chatting with someone in between takes. And for some reason, what, because I was distracted and I wasn't thinking, I wound up crossing some information on vaults. So I wound up talking about Vault 11 and I said the wrong information for Vault 11 and it, it didn't really hit me until this playthrough. Uh, I went through and I was doing the main storyline where you have to follow the Great Cons to Boulder City and confront them and Boulder City is right by Vault, vault 11 and Vault 11 is one of my favorite vaults. So I was like, yeah, okay, I can't finish it all right now, but let me just pop in and get some easy experience points for, you know, killing some mantises and giant rats or whatever. Plus there's a whole bunch of ants out front. And when I popped in, it hit me that I had said the wrong information about Vault 11 in the video. So to make up for it, I'm doing a video entirely on Vault 11. I'm so excited. Vault 11 is probably one of my top five favorite vaults. So I'm gonna teach you about Vault 11. So a quick refresher for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about because you don't play the Fallout games. Um, the vaults were underground bunkers that were built by Vault Tech Corporation. They were commissioned by the US government uh, and this is all the late 21st centuries. Like the bombs fall on October 23rd, 2077. So this is in the future. And so we get these vaults. And 17 of the 122 that were commissioned are... Uh, control vaults. There's no experiment. They're literally just there. They open the doors, people come in, they reproduce, and they wait for an all clear sim signal so that they can go out into the wasteland and repopulate and just, you know, be. And the other 105 were experiments. Vault 11 was one of the other 105. So, Vault 11. So the bombs fall. And everybody rushes in. And when the door is locked behind them and everyone's in, you know, in stock basically. Um, they find out that the whole time the overseer knew what the experiment was. And the overseer tells them that they have to sacrifice one person a year for the safety of the rest of the vault. So if they kill one person, the rest of the vault will be allowed to live. And understandably, the people in this vault are appalled. They don't want to be any part, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to be part of this. They don't want to, you know, have to dictate who lives, who dies. They don't want to do any of that. So they've been put in this terrible situation where they have to make a horrible decision and they lash out basically and it kind of turns into a jokes on you you did this to us you helped do this to us you're going to be the first one gone so we lose an overseer to this and then people are kind of like you know this isn't a this isn't a terrible idea. Like, maybe this is how we pick who each time. Like, maybe it just, maybe it's the overseer each time. 
So it becomes an election process. I think most of the votes elect an overseer, but they turn it into an election. And I do want to say at this point, I'm going to throw out a content warning because there is a bit of this story that involves sexual coercion and some real shady stuff like that. Um, so you might want to get the kiddos out of the room if there's kiddos. If it's material that you're sensitive to, like maybe it's probably isn't the vault, the vault, the video for you. Um, give you a couple of seconds to get them out or, you know, if you want to go watch something else. All right. So with this election prox process, these voting blocks wind up getting formed. And the voting blocks uh, are, they're kind of like our political parties where it's a group of people that team up basically to get people elected. But these people are trying to get other people elected. They don't want to be elected because they don't want to die. So these are, I mean, we're talking about they're picking enemies. They're setting up people basically that they want to die. They're not at all picking, oh, well, this person would be a good overseer. Mm -mm, we're past that. We are past that at this point. So the whole thing is run by the Coalition of Vault 11 Voting Blocks. They provide information and they do the oversight and make sure everything is done correctly. And there's six main voting blocks that pop up in the middle of all this. And they are the Allied Service Workers Block, the Divine Will Block, the Human Dignity Block, the Justice Block, the United Vault Technicians Block, and the Utilitarian Block. And now out of all of these, the Justice Block is the one who really winds up having the most power and the most clout. Um, and this works for a while. Um, it basically, every block picks a candidate and runs this horribly libelous campaign against them. You know, like, oh, you know, this person's a cheater and this person's a thief and this person does this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. And so on and so forth. And it's a messed up little system, but it works for a while. Until the head of the justice block, his name is Roy Gottlieb. I think I'm saying that right. He gets greedy. Well, really, the whole justice block gets greedy, but he gets really greedy. And he decides that he is going to coerce a woman named Catherine Stone to perform favors for him and his buddies. And they get her to agree to this by saying that if she does not do this, they will nominate her husband, Nathan, to be overseer, which is basically a death sentence because if the justice block puts somebody up, they're basically in power. So we're talking about whoever nominate, whoever they nominate is a goner. And of course she just wants to save her husband. So she agrees. Reluctantly, she agrees. And so she thinks she's, you know, she thinks they're good. They gave her a way out. She took it. It's all good, right? Well, except Rory and his buddies are scumbags. And when it comes nomination time, they nominate Nathan anyway. And Catherine is devastated. Like, absolutely devastated. So she try, she starts trying to figure out how the hell am I going to save my husband? How am I going to save him? How am I going to save him? You know, I thought all these horrible things I was doing were going to work. They didn't. So what do I do now? So Catherine's crafty. 
and she devises a plan. She decides there's only one way to proceed with this. And that is to start killing members of the Justice Block. Like, higher up members of the Justice Block. Justice Block. Like, just work her way down a list, basically. And her logic is, this is going to do a couple of things for them. First of all, she gets revenge on the people who betrayed her. I mean, who doesn't love a good revenge story now and then, huh? And so she gets caught and there's an audit, there's a terminal that you can find that has basically her testimony to the security office on it. And they're like, did you really think you were going to get away with this? And she's like, no, that, that was the plan was I wanted to get caught because she figured if she gets caught and people know she's a murderer, they will put her name forward for overseer. And then if she is nominated for overseer and she's a murderer, people will vote for her instead of her husband. Plus, like I said, she gets revenge on the people who screwed her over. Who ruined her life. I have no idea where the cap on my eyeliner is. That's fun. So, like I said, she gets nominated. Success It's successful. Um, and she becomes overseer. Now, the catch to all of this is that whoever is elected overseer still gets to be overseer for a year. So Catherine has the bright idea that she is going to change the rule. And she enacts, let me see the exact number, Overseer Order 745. And what Overseer Order 745 does is it changes the selection process for Overseer. So we're going to take, we're going to go from electing someone we don't like to basically using a, like a random number generator, sort of. And so whoever is chosen is completely random. So there, you know, there's not going to be these political campaigns against people. There's not anyone that's going to get, you know, what happened to her isn't going to happen again. And Rory and his buddies don't like this because if the election, if the selection becomes random, all of the blocks lose whatever power they have. So right now, nobody wants to cross anyone in the justice block because if they cross them, they're going to get nominated for overseer. And Rory doesn't really want that to change. Rory's totally okay with people not fucking with him, not fucking with his buddies. And so this is where the fall of the vault gets sped up basically um Rory and his buddies decide that they are going to stage an armed coup they're literally going to go down to like one of the lower levels of the vault and you hear him describe this in the audio log they're going to take guns go down to the the lower level of the vault and start taking over things like food and water and power And they're gonna, the vault is gonna be theirs. Like, fuck this girl that they just put in position as overseer, basically. They're, they wanna be in control. Well, unfortunately, this goes badly. Who to thunk it? This goes badly. And people fight back. And when all the fighting is done, there are literally five people left. Like, five people left out of the entire vault. So, really nobody's plans worked out in this whole thing. Ka 
Catherine's plan didn't really work out so well. Uh, Rory's plan, obviously. <clears throat> so there's five people left. Now, how do I know there's five people left? This is where it gets good. So most of the vaults in Fallout, you don't know what's going on. You walk into the vault, you know, you start on that level, read some terminals, and you have to get all this information and kind of put these pieces together. What's funny about Vault 11 is you start out with kind of the end result. When you walk into Vault 11, like you, you're not even in the first door. Well, you're technically in the first door, you're in the vault door. Not even into the actual vault yet. And you see four skeletons on the ground, kind of like splayed out in awkward positions. And there's a 10 millimeter pistol on the floor, like in the middle of these bodies. Okay. And there is a, there's a terminal placed very conspicuously near those bodies. And so when you check the terminal, there's an audio log. And in that audio log, you hear five people talking. And you find out before you ever even go to the vault, what the real point, the goal of the vault was. And the goal of the vault was to get the people to refuse to sacrifice somebody. Because turns out, from day one, the people in Vault 11 literally could have been like, nope, we don't want to kill anybody. And they literally would have been congratulated for and thanked for their selflessness. And the vault door would have been unlocked and they would have been free to go. If they didn't sacrifice someone every year, the whole vault would not die. And they don't figure this out until there's five of them left. After all this infighting, after sexual coercion and all this stuff, it turns out they could have just said no from the beginning. Now, these people are distraught, to say the least. They're disgusted with themselves they're embarrassed they're they don't want anyone to find out so they decide that they are going the best the way to do best way to take care of it is just to kill themselves they don't want people finding out what happened they don't want anything like that and when i say they i mean four of the last five there's one guy who does not think that everyone killing themselves is the way to go he thinks that they should gladly leave the vault and use what happened to them, use the knowledge and like use it as an example so that it doesn't happen to other people, it doesn't happen to other communities. Ugh. And of course he loses this argument, this discussion. So in the audio log, you hear the four of them, the four dead people, kill themselves. And you hear the fifth guy sigh and drop the pistol and walk out. So you go into this vault knowing that there's literally one survivor of this, whatever the experiment is. There's one person left. And then you get all the little tidbits of information. So you go through the vault and you get all this information or whatever. And you can go through and work your way down to the sacrificial chamber or whatever. And they have it set up. Like you walk through the overseer's office. So it makes it even like more fitting that it's the overseer that does it. And you're... The first time I played, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go down there and there's going to be like some poison or something that I'm going to take or 
maybe they'll pump a gas into a room and I'll go to sleep or whatever. They're gonna make it peaceful because they want people to die, so. You walk into the room and there's this little movie and you sit, there's a chair and you sit and you watch this movie and the doors on the side of the room open and there's like sentry bots, like giant robots that just mow you down with bullets. And I don't, I don't know a single person who the first time they played that vault survived that because you have to sit down for the movie to start. So you have to sit down and then like immediately stand back up and then position yourself so you can kill the robots. But after all that, the goal of the vault was actually hoping that the residents would tell the vault to fuck off. They're not going to sacrifice anyone. And instead they killed the entire vault, basically. Isn't that, isn't that a fun bedtime story? So that is my correction about Vault 11. If there's another vault that you want me to do like a longer video about like this, let me know. Leave in the comments. I love vault. I love the vaults, so I will talk about vaults all day. Pick a vault you want to know more about. I'll do a video, maybe. So, I don't know if you've watched my election process video or not. I am not going to tell you how to vote. But uh, Tuesday, November 3rd is the U.S. election, the presidential election. Please, 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 please vote. Do not stay home. Don't be like, oh, I'm not going to vote because my vote's not going to count. Yeah, if you stay home, your vote is not going to count. Duh. So please vote. I may or may not have done this video before election day on purpose. Please vote. Please vote. I hope you have a good day. I hope you rock it. And thank you for joining me for another one of my silly videos.